Today we're on the farm of Matthew and Anne Fogarty, just outside Dungarvan, and we're going to have a chat to Matt, who's just starting to calve down, a few cows have calved, and just to have a chat about what happens at this side of the year on a busy dairy farm. Donald Corkery is joining us as well. He covers the West Waterford area as the milk supply manager. So we dry up the cows the uh, first week of December. Uh, we're back calving again in the middle of January. We calve over a 12-week period. The majority of the cows will be calved, about 75 to 80% calved in the first month. So once we finish milking the first week of December, the parlor gets a, a hot wash of caustic and a hot wash descale. After that then, the parlor and the bull tank get a hot wash once a week up until we start calving. At that time then, just a week before we start calving, everyone gets a hot wash and the parlor gets a deep clean. So we get the machine serviced normally around April and May. The liners are changed twice a year, basically after every 2,000 milkings. Rubber wear then is changed as and when it needs. The reason that we, we keep it washed is if you leave anything idle for a while, things can go wrong and there's no point in going to a milking parlour the first week you're going to start caving and find there's something wrong here or there, you know, and it, it stops a build-up as well of bacteria basically in the plant. Once we start milking, we go back to a normal wash routine, which is it gets a hot wash every morning. Every fifth wash is a descale. It gets a parasitic acid on the final rinse of every wash. Thermoduric, for the most part, was good, but for a few times during the year it spiked. So what we did was we start towards the end of the year, we started using powder with the liquid detergent in the auto wash and we found that that is working. My receiver jar has glass on both ends. When I see that glass getting cloudy, I know that I'm heading for a problem. So we've been milk recording here for the past 25 years. We had a cell count issue back in 2018 and we changed from four times a year to seven times a year. So we do the first milk recording at the end of February and we do the last milk recording just before we start drying up the cows. Any cow that has a cell count at any stage over 100,000 gets antibiotic treatment. I have done milk culturing over the years and back from the time that I had a problem in 2018, uh, CNS was always the problem here. When the cows are milking, the cubicles are limed, cleaned and limed twice a day. When they're dry, they're cleaned and limed once a day. All our cows will have an adequate dry period for the tube that's been used. When a cow comes in, there's antibiotics. We put a band on their leg and also on the whiteboard, we mark them up on the whiteboard with the date that they're ready to go back into the tank. If I have a question mark that I think that maybe a cow got to the tank, if we didn't flick a switch on the dump line, um, I have an antibiotic kit so I can test the milk. After our issue with cell count in 2018, I installed a cluster flush. For a simple reason, I found that the mastitis was spreading at the time and I couldn't get any handle on it, despite dipping clusters and spraying and whatnot. So I bit the bullet and I put in the cluster flush to stop the cross-contamination, and it did. This parasitic acid is used in the cluster flush. Um, it's, as I said, the machine is washed after every milking. When we start calving here, the, we have a loose shed where we put the cows that are nearest to calving and when they're about to calve then we put them into individual pens to calve. Uh, we leave the calf with the cow until the calf drinks the cow. If the calf doesn't drink the cow, we milk the cow and feed the calf. Uh, after the calf has got its feed of beastings from the cow, it goes out into the calf shed and the cow goes down to join the milking group. Before I send any milk to the co-op, I ring my Vulcan driver and I also ring my milk manager before I put any milk into the tank. I suppose the first thing we, we ask uh, our suppliers to do is when they are coming back in the springtime is to give us plenty notice uh, of collection. So um, uh, three days uh, notice before they start putting milk in the tank or, or at least the day they're going to put the milk in the tank to, to, to ring either the, the lorry driver or to ring myself or any of the whoever their milk, milk supply manager is. Uh, it's important we know in advance because the, the lorry 
may not be back in that in that area for another uh, three days, we'll say, and we don't want to, um, old milk being collected in, in, in the tanks. Just from a, from a TBC point of view, every day milk uh, TBC uh, will, will, will double, so uh, if you start off uh, um, anyway high and, and, and it's uh, doubling every day. If you go to three, four days, uh, your, 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 your quality is going to be deteriorating all the time. Record keeping is going to be more important even going forward. Uh, you need to know which cows have got antibiotics and which haven't got antibiotics as well. So uh, record keeping is very important. Making sure your milking machine is working correctly also. Uh, we have had issues in, in the past with dump lines uh, not working correctly and maybe leaving some milk in, so it's important that you keep an eye on all those things. If somebody has, thinks they have an issue with either a cow or, or, or a tank, it's important to get it tested. Um, there are kits available uh, to, to purchase on Tier Lawn Farm Life website. Otherwise, um, contact your, your milk supply manager. It's important that suppliers are aware that Milk um, must be kept out of the tank for at least um, four days after cow calving. Uh, anyone who has done selective dry cow treatment would likely be after using teat sealers um, and there will be traces of the teat sealer in, in the milk for, for four or five days after calving. This must be stripped out of the cows uh, and uh, to make sure no traces get into the um, tank. So it's important that um, you have your, your collection barcode label is available. Um, we'd ask all suppliers to make sure they have barcode labels available on, in their dairy. So it's also important that um, all suppliers have uh, filter socks available, whether that's a disposable filter sock or your inline filter. It's also a department requirement that we must have a, a dairy health, herd health cert in place before milk collection resumes in the, in, in the new year. Uh, so anyone that hasn't their health cert uh, returned, please have that just back in place before you, you look for milk collection. So it's important that uh, um, before you resume collection to, to the co-op that you have a sufficient volume of milk being collected in the, in the bull tank. Um, a low volume of milk in the bull tank will, will cause issues uh, with, with milk quality. Uh, you can get freezing of milk and also if the milk isn't up to the agitation blade on the first milking or at any subsequent milking, it will result in, in poor quality milk. So this side of the year when either suppliers have been milking through or when they're starting off at the side of the year it's important to have a look at what detergents you're using and how to get the best efficacy on farm for this year. So always have a look back to see what worked for you last year and not. Some places would will rely mostly on liquid detergents but what we have found is that if a problem starts to build up using a caustic powder in every week or maybe once or twice a week during when you just have the problems actually really helps to break a cycle of build-up. Another thing to do is to have a look at what you're using. Is it the best value for money that you thought it was going to be? Is it strong enough? Um, and is it working really well with your system? Sometimes what we can see are that the tubes get clogged up if there's a very high caustic content and they have to be cleared out with hot water. The other thing to remember is that if starting off at the start of the year, it's actually better to start off with fresh detergent. We will see residues of perchlorates and chlorides build up if detergent has sat in the cold weather over the Christmas period and hasn't been used. For anyone that's been milking through, usually detergent's working pretty well. If they're not, just pull up, have a chat with your milk supply manager or your detergent rep and see can you tweak your routine. Hot water is very crucial. Um, this side of the year, again, it's ideal to review. If you've struggled to get enough hot water last year, install a new hot water system. Either look at solar, gas, a dairy geyser, or an electric system. You need your hot water to start off over 70 degrees, and it needs to be about 55 when you're dumping it. If you're using a detergent for a hot wash and your water is only at 45, 50 degrees, the detergent just won't be effective, and you won't get it clean. For the first week or so, it'll look okay, you won't fail any tests, but what you'll find is that over time you'll get a build-up, and that build-up won't clear, and then you'll be going in with a lot of extra product to actually try to clear off the build-up, or even manually you'll be scrubbing claw pieces and things like that with brushes. That's not what you want at all. So have a look at have you got enough hot water to match the detergent that you want to use. Equally, have a look at the strength of the detergent that you're using. There's a lot of different ones out in the market, the stronger the caustic in particular, the better clean you're going to get. But making sure that your system can cope with that. So making sure that your tubes don't get blocked up and keep an eye on those every week. 
Another simple thing is to always make sure your drums of detergent in an auto wash system are full. A lot of the time they can actually be empty and you not realise it for a wash or two and you'll very quickly get a build up. An area that sometimes we don't talk enough about is having a look at the wash truck and you need to make sure that your wash truck has storage enough to take in enough water to mix up your detergent right. Some of the Chagas research actually calls out as well, if you're using a water softener, make sure you're filling it up and reusing it and checking that it's working all the time. So you should test your water at the start and then after the softener has been added, just making sure that you're getting that right. If you've got hard water, it is harder for your detergent to actually work. So that's why a water softener is key. What we always recommend people to do is make sure that your teeth disinfectant is approved. Make sure you avoid using products with chloride or chlorine dioxide in them as teeth disinfectants or quacks or iodines. These will all give us residues in milk that, we, that are not wanted for in dairy products. If you've got any queries about anything we've said today, contact your local milk supply manager or have a look at Tierlawn Farm Life website where we have a lot of advisory pieces for this side of the year and starting back into milking.